ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to talk about is economics, money, and how shift happens uh if you've been on this planet for the last better part of what three and a half years now uh we are on what some would call the other side of the global pandemic known as COVID-19 um I'm not going to tell you that COVID is over because it's not over because I know people right now even as I record that have COVID. Uh, Obviously, it's not as prevalent in the news. You don't have as many people passing away from COVID. So, you know, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of people that think that we've moved on and COVID is no longer here. Uh, But I want to talk to you about what has happened to us economically over the last few years. Um, So let's go back. I remember in the height of the pandemic, um, a lot of money. And when I tell you a lot of money was being made, tons and tons of money was being made um, by companies, by individuals. Uh, Anytime that there's a... um, economic downturn or a crisis, uh, there's always money that's being made. Uh, It may not necessarily be made by people like me or you, but money's being made. And I'm speaking on this because I know a little bit about it. Uh, Not because I have money, but because I don't. (laughs) Shout out to Uncle Dolomite and King Germ and Eclectic who got all the money, but that's beside the point. Um, but no, I I mean, like, as many of you know, like I've worked and still continue to work, um, in the financial field, if you will, mortgage industry. Um, so I've seen a lot happen. And I think the biggest thing that I tried to, um, come to terms with, even in the height of the pandemic is. It's something that I said out loud, and I know I said it on this podcast before, and it's worth repeating, like, what is it going to look like on the other side of COVID? Because anytime you got money coming in like this, the way that it was, like, there has to be some type of downfall. At some point, the cash bubble, the proverbial cash bubble has to bust, right? Um. And I mean, money was flowing in left and right. And and indulge me in this because I'm sure some of you can probably attest. Don't raise your hand because they're watching. How many of you listening or watching on YouTube, thank you for watching, um, received PPP loans during the pandemic? I know people, and I'm not here to snitch, but I know people who received PPP loans. And PPP loans were basically for you know, to help businesses stay afloat. Um, These people didn't have businesses. (laughs) So I don't necessarily know how you can get a PPP loan for a business and you don't have a business. I mean, other than lying. (laughs) So, I mean, like, that's basically it. Uh, But like, yeah, I mean, people got PPP loans. Um, what about the stimmies? The stimulus checks, man. The stimulus checks were coming in hand over fist, man. People were getting money. I, I wish I had time to talk about how, you know, people, for what, for what it's worth, if you want to be political, had a lot of stuff to say about, you know, Joe Biden. But even his staunch uh, critics, nobody turned down that stimulus money because that was, quote, unquote, free money to you. Um, Shout out to Uncle Joe. Don't fall down. 
Watch your step. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's it's amazing when you think about it. I mean, stimulus was coming in, you had PPP loans, you had now granted, there were a lot of people that were that were out of work. I don't want to, you know, be insensitive and say like everybody was making money hand over fist because it wasn't. And I even saw in my industry, I saw a influx of money coming into not just the company that I work for, but much, much more. And everybody was getting paid. Uh, and at the same time in our industry, housing interest rates were at a extreme low, uh, probably the lowest they've ever been in this country's history. Um, and I wish I had time to talk about what the housing market was and is right now. And, and trust me, that is another podcast that's coming. Um, but yeah, it, it, the, the housing market was crazy. Um, and in the meantime, and I, and I, know, I know I spoke on this before and it's worth repeating again, um, just in my industry alone, uh, because there was an influx of people buying houses, houses being built, you know, obviously companies need people to, Hey, we need you to underwrite this. We need you to approve this. You, you are one of the most well sought after people and you are tenured and you know what you're doing and you've done this for 20 plus years. We need you to come to our company and help us build this so that we can push out all of these loans and you're an expert in your field. So 12 Kyle come with us. And me and people like me were bombarded daily from recruiters who were blowing us up on email like, hey, hey. And, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with y'all a little secret. I remember distinctly one recruiter hit me up and said, hey, we'll give you $60,000 increase on your salary and a $20,000 signing bonus just to sign your name on the contract. Which is cool because I only make a dollar right now, but... But yeah, that did happen. And I seriously contemplated it. I mean, like, who wouldn't? I mean, who who wouldn't want an extra 60 grand? I mean, unless you got it, like, you know, King Jerk or Dolomite or Eclectic. But I digress. Um, yeah, but you know, this is where we were. You know why? Because shift happens. And I thought very seriously about it, but I Something told me, like, the money's flowing now, but what happens when the money stops? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When it's time to cut back, cut salaries, cut employees, they start at the top, and they start with the salaries that are the highest. And it doesn't matter how long you've been there. Nobody, nobody cares because you you know, got your kid in college. They don't. I mean, it's business. EPMD famously once said it's business, not personal. And that's true. And so I was concerned about the market cooling off. I was concerned about what happens when the stock market slows down. What happens when all of this money that's flowing throughout all of these businesses throughout our country, what happens when the shift happens because if you study economics, you know that there will be a shift. Why? Because shift happens. Now I have a marketing degree from the great South Carolina state university, right? Uh, one of my favorite professors, and I've spoken very highly of him is the great Dr. Cole. Dr. Cole taught me, um, he was a professor at South Carolina State University, and he taught many subjects, but he taught us uh, micro, macroeconomics. Um, he taught, also taught accounting and other business courses. But one of the first things that Dr. Cole said in class, and I quote, and I never forget this, and I live by this, he said, 
everybody is expendable unless you own the company. That's the only way that you're not expendable if you own the company. But if you don't own the company, you are expendable. And so that always stuck with me because, like, you just never know when you're going to get that tap on the shoulder, like, hey, man, it's time to go. You know, they're, they're laying people off. Because why? Shift happens. You can't have that kind of money flowing in and out of a entity and know, understand that it's not going to keep flowing like this. I mean, like, at some point in time, the deluge of dollars turns into a stream. And you have to be prepared for when shift happens. Um, so we're in the middle of COVID and everything. And I remember um, uh, in December of 2021, uh, when your boy tested positive for COVID and went on over to the little place, got the COVID test. And, you know, and I, I did a podcast on it, um, which was, and I still feel kind of weird about it because like, you know, not that I wanted to be laid up in a bed, but I mean, like my COVID, my my bout with COVID was very, very simple. I've had colds that made me feel worse than I felt when I had COVID. I really didn't feel bad. And I felt bad that I didn't feel bad, if, if that makes sense. Like, I felt like, damn, I should have, I should feel bad. I mean, there's people dying, but I feel okay. Like, I'm bopping around the house and nothing's wrong. But that's beside the point. But my thing was, I remember going to get the COVID, COVID test. And um, I remember them asking me for my like insurance information. I'm like, well, you know, and I, we, had, we had gotten COVID tests before. And they each time they asked for the insurance information. I'm like, well, I'm getting a COVID test. I mean, what do you want my insurance information for? And something told me like at some point in time, they're going to need this information because why? These free COVID tests won't always be free. At some point, they're going to make some money off of this. If they aren't making money off of this already, and I wasn't crazy enough to understand that they weren't, I mean, that they weren't making any money. Of course they were making money. The people that created the vaccines, everybody involved on down the line were making money. And money was flowing, again, throughout this country. Um, but someone was paying something. Why? Because shift happens. And so what happens is, is that we were basically sitting on, or we, we were within a financial bubble and the bubble just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And more people kept blowing into the bubble, blowing into the bubble. And as the bubble, as people blew into the bubble financially, it expanded. So everybody got a little bit of something for though. And I'll put it like this. I know very few people who did not make some type of money outside of their regular jobs in and during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that could be through a stimulus check, that could be increases at work, anything, right? So shift happens. And that's why you kind of knew at some point either the bubble was going to get too big or the bubble was going to pop. Why? Because shift happens. Economically, you couldn't keep it up, right? And then we fast forward to now, you look around and they are, there are a lot of businesses. I mean, a lot of businesses, I'll be honest, just because of the nature of the business could not survive COVID-19. Case in point, like, um, here in the South, uh, there's a popular, and I don't know if it's outside of the South, so I'm just going to say here in the South, I live in Atlanta, um, popular uh, all-you-can-eat places like this place called Golden Corral. The Golden Corral was a place where you would pay a set fee of money. It might be $15, and it's literally all you can eat. You can eat mac and cheese, you can eat chicken, fried chicken, baked chicken, cornbread, uh, collard greens, whatever they had on the menu, and you basically served yourself. You could eat ice cream, get as much as many sodas and pop or whatever you want to call it that you wanted. But because a place like Golden Corral was um, very handsy, I mean, you were leaning over and 
digging up your collard greens and putting them on your plate. Um, you know, the vid was prevalent. I mean, like, so a place like that, you couldn't even let alone sit in with a mask on and you couldn't really eat there and you couldn't be breathing all on the food. So a place like the Golden Corral, at least in some places, well, most Golden Corrals throughout the pandemic closed down. Um, a couple of them came back, not as many, but a business like that just couldn't sustain. Um, I saw a lot of movie theaters uh, because obviously people need to be in seats uh, for movie theaters to survive. And, you know, we were trapped in the house for a little while. And even once we came outside, you know, the idea of sitting in a place for a couple of hours uh, just didn't, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't go too well for a lot of people. You know, they weren't too keen to that idea of, you know, being, you know, with COVID running rampant, sitting in a spot for two hours and people breathing on you. No, that wasn't going to happen, right? So some businesses just couldn't sustain. Why? Because shift happens. Um, Others, it just wasn't, you couldn't keep up. Like at some point, the bubble was going to burst. Um, and so we saw it all across the board. I mean, like, from everybody, from first, and I don't even want to go in particular order, but let's just say we saw it in tech. Um, Twitter gets sold, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and, I mean, like, they reduced their staff to, like, I think 100 people. They went from, like, 5,000 people to 100 people. Um, which is crazy. And you're asking them to <laughs> keep this Twitter machine moving that really can function with, you know, 5,000 people doing it, but it ain't going to function the same if only 500 are doing it or a hundred are doing it. Um, and then we saw it like in media, uh, Bloomberg had layoffs, Warner brothers, um, Oh, L.A. Times, they cut like 75 positions. Uh, the Athletic uh, purchased the New York Times for $550 million. Uh, and then just a couple of weeks ago, at the time of this recording, uh, they removed their whole, the New York Times removed the whole uh, sports staff. Um, and they said they're going to move writers to different reporters, different parts of, you know, the Athletic. But I mean, like, it's been across the board. Spotify, uh, Fox News, MTV News um, said that they're going to cut 25% of their staff. Um, BuzzFeed. I mean, everybody across the board. And then you look at an entity like ESPN, and that was the 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 shoe that dropped that you know caught a lot of people's eye. Well, ESPN said a couple of years ago, like, hey, we're going to reduce about 7,000 jobs. We're getting rid of like 7,000 jobs. Why? Because shift happens. Now, their shift didn't necessarily have much. Well, it had something to do with the with the pandemic, but I'll give you an idea. Like an entity like ESPN makes a lot of money from cable subscriptions. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Baylor. Do you still have cable? Because most people that I know no longer have cable, myself included. You know, we have other streaming things to watch on TV. And maybe you might get, you know, Hulu Live and watch your sports. Maybe you might get your Sunday ticket here or there. You might get your NBA League Pass or whatever like that. But for the most part, most of the people that I know don't have cable TV anymore. And if ESPN was making, let's say if my cable bill was $100, if ESPN was making $10, off of every hundred dollar payment that I was making to my cable subscriber, then ESPN was coming. You know, Brahm said the mob. <laughs> so guess what happens when I've been at home for, you know, a year because of COVID and I'm working from home. And now I'm realizing, Hey man, ain't shit on cable TV. 
what do I need this for? My kids are streaming and watching, you know, things on Hulu and I'm watching YouTube where I can see the 12 Kyle podcast, shameless plug. <laughs> so what do I need cable for? So let me cut the cord. So I cut the cord. Everybody I know cut the cord. And so subsequently ESPN lost a lot of money millions probably billions of dollars that they had coming in and so when you say well you got to lay off seven thousand people and they said that we have to get these salaries we have to we have to eliminate they said this publicly we have to eliminate five billion dollars in salaries billion with a b why because shift happens so a lot was made from fans and people in general who saw ESPN lay off a lot of people. But the thing about it is it really made headlines once they laid off their on-air talent. And by me, my on-air talent, the people that we see on TV on a day-to-day, night-to-night basis, people like Jeff Van Gundy, Jalen Rose, Max Kellerman, Susie Colbert, who had been at ESPN, I think, 27 years. Keyshawn Johnson, um, Steve Young, Neil Everett, uh, Todd McShay, just to name a few. And I remember when that was announced, a lot of fans and people were saying, well, man, I don't understand how you fire Jalen Rose and you keep a guy like Kendrick Perkins and he's terrible. Or you keep a woman like, Malika Andrews. Well, it's simple. One, you don't know where Jalen Rose is in his contract, but two, when companies decide to let people go based on we're 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 dumping salaries, we're cutting salaries, we're cutting people, it's based on the number. They're, I mean, like they're not they're not picking and choosing who they want to let go. What they see is they see a a, a list and they're like. Jalen Rose, you make one point eight million dollars. Oh, we don't. We 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 can. We, he can go. And the same thing happens when you're at a company like the company where I worked, or used to work. Hey, you know, not that I had a big salary because I didn't. You know, I made a dollar, dollar an hour. <laughs> but it was the numbers thing. It's like, okay, well, we got we got to let these people go. We don't, and, and the thing about it is nobody looked at the sheet and saw 12 Kyle and said, oh, he's got two kids in college. He's got a wife. He's got two kids at home. He has a mortgage. He has this. He has that. Let's save him. No, it's, you got to go, Jack. And so it was. Why? Because shift happens. And so I think the thing that people fail to understand about the ESPN layoffs they were, in essence, making business decisions based on salaries also. But, you know, the, the more that you do, the more valuable you are. If you're somebody who's just doing reporting on football, you're only working for the network basically during football season. And, you know, the other time, I mean, why, why should I pay you a million dollars for that? When I can get this guy or, or this girl over here, I shouldn't say guy, girl, this man or this woman over here and give them $200,000 and I can work them. I can work the hell out of them. I can put them on uh, <laughs> the early morning show, the midday show and the evening show. And I get more bang for my buck. And people are still going to tune in because this ESPN, we're ESPN. That's how it works. And, you know, much similar happened in my company. It was, you know, they just let people go. It was like, all right, we got to let people. This was like a year ago. Now, fortunately for me, I was able to, I saw the writing on the wall. Why? Because I've been here before. I've been downsized before. Why? Because shift happens. Fortunately enough for me, and through the grace of God, I was able to find something and land in a very, very safe spot before the shift happens. Or actually during the shift happening. But it all worked out. It all worked out. Um, and I'm thankful for that. But I know everybody's not so thankful. So even like me, I have a lot of colleagues and people that I work with and friends who are in the industry 
and they're looking for work. And some of them have been out of work like a year because shift happens. And honestly, they may, if they are able to secure other jobs within the mortgage industry, they may take, they may have to take a pay cut because shift happens. And so they're going to tell you, well, no, we're not going to pay you 150. We're going to pay you 75. Now, if you've been making 150 for the last four years and somebody tells you you got to make 75, you start looking around like there's a camera. And I mean, that it's relative, but you, you get what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just using those numbers as a pejorative. You get my point. Like, because shift happens now, I have to shift how I live. And some people can hang, some people can't. Some people can do it, some people can't. Shift happens, unfortunately. And that's business. It ain't personal, it's business. Um, And so the whole ESPN thing was like bugged out and people were up in arms. And I just sat back and just looked and like, shift happens. It just does. I mean, it's, yeah, it's sad. I mean, but like, I'm, I love to see somebody like Susie Colbert on ESPN who, who's been there 27 years. But what about that producer or that camera person that works for that show that she's on that got canceled? See, Susie Colbert may have made like $2 million a year. And I'm pretty sure if Susie, if Susie Colbert, if she's smart, she probably invested a lot of money, but I don't know her personally. I don't know her. And I, and I can't count nobody's pockets but mine, right? But, 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 here's the thing. People are in outrage because she was downsized, but at the same time, what about that cameraman who makes, who 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 moved from Starkville, Mississippi to Bristol, Connecticut, for this job at ESPN and he's been working at this job for seven years and he's uprooted his family and everything like that. And now this $90,000 job is down the drain. And he probably can't find another job where he is. So does he go back to Starkville, Mississippi, or does he, how, how does, how does he maintain shift happens? And if you study money and you study business you really just have to try to be in front of the shift because shift does happen and then you know even to bring it a little bit more further at the time of this recording the in hollywood i'm sure you've heard the writers and the actors and the act screen actors guild um they are on strike for better wages um they want residuals for streaming um, it's a lot of moving parts. I, I I could spend probably half an episode trying to explain what it is. But they want to be paid and compensated for what they're doing. And the thing about it is, is that when you move, when you remove people from network TV, and if you remove writers from net, network TV, and if you say, hey, we're going to bring in artificial intelligence to write us a script and we'll just tweak the script. Well, then you've eliminated a writer or several writers. It's not fair. Life ain't fair, but shift happens. But you've used a computer, which is man-generated, to eliminate positions. Now, you can't have a computer replace a person that acts and directs and stuff like that, but the flip side of it is that if you create a reality television show, then most of those shows aren't under the Screen Actors Guild. And, you know, you can pay people less, a whole lot less. So instead of paying somebody $100,000 an episode and paying them $4,000 for every time their, you know, episode gets aired on network TV or paying them you know, $100 anytime somebody streams it, you don't have to pay them anything. Well, I, I shouldn't say anything. Very a, a whole lot less than that. I don't want to get into the 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 actual factuals with the Hollywood stuff, but I mean you can look it up to get the gist of it. But I wanted to kind of just give you a broad picture. But shifts happens. It really does happen. And I, for one, hope and pray that 
again, at the time of this recording, that the actors and actresses and the writers, that they get what they're looking for as far as negotiations, get back to the negotiating table and get everything that they're asking for because just because shift happens, I mean, you still have bargaining power. You still have, um, you still have a voice. You still can ask for things. Um, and you're a part of a very strong union. And I, and I would encourage anyone in the union to keep pushing and keep fighting a good fight because it's going to be needed. Um, but shift happens. And business-wise, it's, it's not, it's, sometimes it's not black and white. It's always green. It's always about green. It'll always be about green. And, it, and you know, the people with the most green make the decisions, unfortunately. Shift happens, but you have to make sure that you're trying to be ahead of the shift or figure out a way to hustle around it. Because, see, that's the thing. Like, I tell people all the time, I, I talk a lot about me and my man Mo. And you guys have heard Mo on here on this podcast. Um, one of my best friends from college, we played ball together at South Carolina State. We were both marketing majors. And we say all the time, like, we have a degree from the university, and it says Bachelor of Science Marketing. But it really should say Bachelor of Science. It should say 12 Kyle Bachelor of Science Hustler. Because that's the one thing or one of many things that they taught us at our beautiful, illustrious HBCU. How to hustle. You have to figure it out. Like, there's really no ins and outs about it. You just have to figure out how to hustle. And you have to try to be one step ahead of the curve because shift happens. Economically, everything is going to move and it's going to be constant. And because that financial bubble has burst to, to some degree, or at least to a lot of degrees, how we move in this post-COVID era is going to be very key, not just for us for the next five years, not just for the next 10 years, but really for the next generation. Because trust me when I tell you, from top to bottom, there's still a lot of money being made. And the crazy part about it is the people that make the money, they're not going to tell you or me how they've made the money. And that's cool because I can figure it out or at least get some game on how to figure it out. And I don't need to make as much as Bob Iger makes at uh, ESPN slash ABC slash Disney or wh whoever he, he works for. I don't need to make as much as him. I don't need to make, you know, five, oh, excuse me, 40, bi 40 million a year. I don't need to do that. But what I do need to do is figure out how to way to navigate myself through the shift because the way that business moves now, it's a 18 wheeler and it will run you off the road financially. If you're not careful, it will run you off the road. If you're not steadfast in moving and trying to do what you want to do and to get where you're trying to get. And I'll be honest, King Germ, nobody's looking out for the little man. And we're all the little man, no matter how much money you think you have, we're all the little man. And everybody didn't have to be a millionaire, but at the same time, financially speaking, educate yourself. Find ways to make it work for you because the system is the system. You just got to kind of figure out how to hustle with it or hustle around it. More importantly, you got to learn how to not let the system hustle you. Why? Because shift happens. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Thursday at midnight from time to time. We drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Uh, if you feel so inclined, hit us up, send us a couple of dollars. Why? Because shift happens. <laughs> hit us up on cash app dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. 
Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy, 12 Kyle, and this has been another edition of the 12 Kyle Podcast. I'll catch you guys next time. Five G.